Hello everybody, Dr. Rick here dropping on dropping in on you. Look, I'm not going to be <clears throat> long at all, but I do have a point I need to make. Uh, before I do that, I am going to ask everybody who watches this video to show some love, show some support for the work we do in the community. Uh, look in the description box, click that link, go and show some support if you prefer uh, using Cash App, the organization's Cash App handle is also in the description box. Now, news has hit the wires, uh, and I, wanted, I gave it enough time to make sure um, that the news that hit the wires were accurate. Uh, but England's former monarch, Queen Elizabeth, uh, passed away. Now, Based on the way I was reared, based on the way I carry my energy, based on the way that I try to move and live my life, keeping my family and loved ones and myself in mind, uh, I don't speak ill or down on the dead or celebrate the death of anyone, uh, but I will talk about facts. And I'm going to talk more along the lines of what we're going to see as a result of colonialism. Uh, and that is, we're about to find out exactly why black people can't get out of last place. We're going to see more black people, uh, people of African descent, and even people in Africa, sending their well wishes and their rest in heavens and rest in pieces and all of that. Uh, I'm not saying be evil. I'm not saying be dark. I'm saying be aware of your history. Be aware of what's going on. I I believe in <clears throat> having a certain level of respect for death. So again, I am not going in on this woman, but what I am going to say is when you look at the effect of colonialism in Africa and slavery in the U.S. and the Caribbean and in South America and understand that it was countries like England that perpetuated uh, this, you know, you still have South Africa, which is uh, a form of uh, English colony, predominantly. Uh, that's just now in the last 25 years or so starting to come around. And it's still a lot of stuff going on down there. That's a part and reflection of colonialism. If you want to understand the impact of colonialism, whether it's English colonialism or French colonialism, read France but Fanon's book, Black uh, black face, white mask, um, and wretched of the earth. And you will get a clear understanding of just how emphatic it is and why we do a bunch of the things we do. Uh, you know, before I could even get on here, I start to see that stuff roll down my timeline. Again, you don't have to speak ill of anyone. You don't have to, but to, to sit up and understand the dynamic. When you look at the huge diamond on her scepter, Africa, the gold chariot she rides in, Africa, and so much more of the wealth. The wealth, so much of the wealth that that family holds isn't wealth built, it's wealth seized. And for me, I think that I'm good on well wishes. I think that, 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 that they have enough of that. I think that the family's gonna do that. But my thing is, when I study my people, when I look at my people and I see how we respond to things, it tells me where we're at. It tells me why we can't unify and move because we're still too uh, centered and related into the false identity they gave us, the false notion of who we are and how we fit in and what was going on, the false notion of who they were. Because a, an understanding and study of history doesn't give a whole lot to be celebrated when you look at what what's going on and there are a bunch of people who know her personal story and get involved in her personal story uh and all of that and for each person it's their own thing to do but my point is when i look at what is happening now you know you're gonna have black people crying never met her in their life uh and can be aware of the history uh as it uh associates as it's associated with colonialism and literally just be lost and hurt and everything like that and um, 
you know, then then some are going to be so radicalized that it's not based off of the real history and heritage of the throne. It's what they did to Diana that's going to have some people alienated and not really feeling it and, and whatever. And, you know, OK. Um, but for me, uh, this is a pass, um, you know, again, that throne hasn't been good to my people. Uh, and I have no reason to celebrate it. I have no reason to sit up and have sympathy. I don't uh, wish death upon anyone, but death comes for us all. Uh, I, I would hope that in understanding that, that we would choose to live a life that leaves a legacy behind that can be celebrated. And even then, there are going to still be people who won't like us. That's just life. But for me, the understanding that life is temporal, that it's not forever, at least not in the way that we are living it here. There's a mission to be accomplished in the time that you're here on this earth. There's a purpose to be lived out while you're here on this earth. There is an impact to be made. And the question is, are we making an impact individually and collectively that speaks to who we really are. We are a unique and special people, but we spend way too much time living in the gaze or the beam of someone else's interpretation of who we are, our assessment of who we are, and we live with an identity that's not ours. My hope is that at some point in time we reclaim our true selves, that we stand in the brilliance, brilliance of our history, the brilliance of our uniqueness, the brilliance of our power and beauty, and that we start to act and behave in that manner. I um, am blessed to have followed behind unbelievable people uh, who spent their lives creating work to uncover and reveal the truth. The Dr. Franz Kress Welsing, who is the reason that I entered into the field of psychology. Dr. Naeem Agbar, another great um, mind in the world of psychology. Dr. Amos Wilson, one of the most brilliant minds um, ever. Dr. Yosef Benyakin and Dr. Claude Anderson. Um, and Asa Hilliard and James Smalls, and I can go on down the line. They've given us so much uh, to expose us to the unique power that resides in us. And doc, uh, Dr. Ashri Krezi, uh, Dr. Tony Browder, and I can just go on of these brilliant minds that have given us so much to open our eyes. And so when I look, I'm more focused on my people and where we are than to celebrate a monarch um, that was directly responsible for some of the things that negatively happen to people I associate with. Whether you're Pan-African or not, you've got to make an, uh, some sort of assessment in relation to who we are now and where that comes from. And, you know, uh, on and on, no. Uh, there's a lot that happened long before she was ever born. She was born into it. But everything you're born into, you have the power to change. You have the power to evaluate and assess things and decide, this is not the life I want to live. This is not what I want to be my legacy. And you can change it. And that didn't happen. And so it is what it is. But I'm watching my people. I'm watching how we respond to it. Again, you don't need vitriol. You don't need hatred. Because the thing is, it takes a lot of negative energy, energy to send out hatred. It takes a not, lot of negative energy to wish people misery. But you can speak and stand on your truth. You can speak and stand on what you feel is right. Without being disrespectful, disrespectful or dishonorable, you have a right to do that. I think that it is only fair that we give a balanced assessment to the legacy of this person. And um, my assessment doesn't bode well. And I'm pretty sure there are some people that think that she was an unbelievable leader in Monarch. 
but all of it needs to bear out. And so that's that that that's my thing is that I'm already seeing us lose our minds behind someone that has shown you how she feels about us, actually. Um, and, you know, the way that she has behaved and and and, and that is what it is. But again, I think that we have to become more aware of who we are as a people. One of the things that my work has focused on is the importance of having a sense of identity. When we're in an identity crisis and it shows in our behavior, it shows in how we respond to adversity, it shows in how we respond to uh, opposition and oppression, uh, this identity crisis has to be addressed. Uh, that's been a great deal of my work is presenting a sense of who we are and taking what has been passed on to me and expanding on it to really truly open up the eyes of our people to who we are because if we ever discover that in truth if we ever make up in our minds that we are going to truly explore the power within the brilliance within the beauty within uh, the creativity within uh, there's absolutely no stopping us but as long as we can be convinced to celebrate them to aspire to them to see them as some way being superior uh, we'll never walk out of this. We'll never experience the things that we talk about as if they were as if, if as if they were dreams and not destinies. And that's the thing that concerns me. Again, you know, uh, this is not any vitriol or hatred. I don't have a, a dark emotion. I just don't have something that I want to invest in something that has not served my people well. And I'm more concerned with my people who are going to be overly invested in the sympathy and the pain and and the suffrage of what's going to happen on a woman who lived to be 96 years old um so with that being said you know i'm sure i'm going to be a cold person i'm going to be cold-hearted and a bunch of other things and all i've ever done is serve <laughs> uh many times to my detriment and I'll be okay with being whatever people say, but I'm going to speak because we lack people who are willing to speak truth when it's associated with adversity and when it's associated with negative consequences. We, we, re, we recoil back into a place of comfort. I, I've never sought comfort in my life as a, an aspiring entrepreneur, as an athlete, as a father, as a husband. I have not aspired or looked to comfort, uh, look to being, oh, I am reaching and trying to be the best I can be, and I'm trying to challenge as many people along the way to do the same. And one of the things that's important to me is just being straight up honest. Um, and my assessment on this is what it is. If people take it and say it's, it's hatred, then that's on them. Uh, I don't have hatred. Uh, that takes so much negative energy. Uh, I have learned, especially the older I get, to release things. But in releasing things, it doesn't mean that I've forgotten. I'm just not going to carry it with me. So on that note, look, I'm going to get out of here. Everybody's got to do their own thing. And I, I'm going to love my people no matter where they're at and no matter what they do in this. I'm going to love my people, and I think I've shown that over the years and I'm going to continue to do that but at the same time I feel I have an obligation to speak on this uh, and I hope I'm, I made myself clear and no matter how clear I make myself there will be someone who will come along and want to twist it and turn it and make it into something that it's not and that's what it is and I'm okay with that but I, I think I've made myself clear and again uh, I'm about to get off of here. I'm at this 15, almost at this 15 minute mark where I, that I gave myself to do this. I wasn't going to spend a lot of time on it. So I'm going to once again ask if you believe in the work we've been doing. Black men lead, restoring ghettos, forgotten daughters. Um, music is life. Uh, the Black Community uh, Empowerment Initiative, things that we've been doing for years. Um, mental health uh, resources and wraparound services for young black males and young black females um, who are suffering in those areas, uh, helping people deal with trauma, a big issue. Uh, and so 
if you believe in that, if you believe in the work we've done for years and you've been around long enough, you've seen it, then click the link in the description box and show your love. If you decide that you want to give by way of Cash App, the organization's Cash App account handle is also in the description box. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.